Welcome everybody to the 100 day offensive qualifiers match between Spare No Other Team and Pulp Fiction. Hopefully you guys are having a great day. I am Axe FPS. And both teams are starting to load in now. Looks like they are almost sorted out. Corona King, how you doing? See you in chat. And it looks like we are shooting for a 36 minute start time. So the 100 Days Offensive is our front lines tournament that is now taking place. I enjoy spectating the front lines tournament. Um, and the maps for today are Amiens, Ballroom Blitz, and if we have to go to a tiebreaker, it will be Aragon Forest. So it should be exciting. Can everybody in chat hear everything just fine? Let me know. Just want to make sure everything is coming through just fine. So we will be starting here in 20 seconds. Make sure both teams are ready to go. So the German team will be Snot, and the British side will be Pulp Fiction. And hopefully, yep. So Snot has already spawned in. PF has already spawned in. I can hear an echo with your voice. Which part is faint? The The game audio is going to be faint because there's nothing really going on. But I can turn it up just a little bit. Let me know if those audio changes work for you guys. So... PF does have a couple more players on burn. Let's jump down here on first person view so we can get some first person action here. Let me know if that echo goes away. I might just be talking a little bit louder than normal. You want those wounds patched? So PF will take the first back. objective. So we will be moving to the Bravo flag. I do not like that camera at all. There we go. And again, if game audio is not loud enough, let me know, guys, so I can get that turned up for you guys.
Hopefully you all are enjoying your Tuesday evenings for those that are in Europe and South Africa and early afternoon for NA. It looks like PF is pulling their tank in on the right side of Bravo. Snot has their light tank on burn. Wandy Ferris, how you doing today? So both teams do have dedicated repairman for their vehicles, which is a smart play. Ooh, Snot's repairman gets taken out. So JW is going to be forced to pull back off of the objective just a little bit to provide cover to repair. And these rounds, there's three rounds, and it's the best of three rounds. It sounds like you have a live stream on another device, and your mic is picking it up. There is no other device running that is weird. I will keep looking into it, Chris. Thank you for letting me know. So we are going to be moving back to the Central Charlie flag. And as you can kind of see, Snot is spread out. They're trying to get behind PF here. But PF is going to get on the flag first with more numbers. Um, Snot's tank is pushing past the Charlie objective. And I don't really see any Snot players. We have one on burn. It looks like he just got taken out. Um, PF is in a very good, advantageous position here with Overwatch. Yeah, this is a great map for front lines. I enjoy it as well. I don't play a ton of front lines, but I think that this one is very well balanced. And look at the stronghold that PF has right now on uh, Snot. Snot is kind of pinned behind the, the Charlie cars here. Um, we got, it looks like we have two Snot players. The tank, JW, is still off to the right-hand top side of the screen. We'll see if they can do anything with that. I think he's going to try and prepare to bring his tank up behind PF. But it looks like PF is going to take this Charlie flag once again. And they do succeed. Let's see if we can get down here on some of this action. As you can see, Snot is already pushing back to their Bravo objective, setting up, getting ready to go. Looks like Ashy Boy is kind of off to the side, playing it, playing it quiet, which is a smart move. Let's see what. Let's see if they have any. So PF does have their heavy tank back up, and it looks like he's going to be bringing it down the Bravo Road. Justin McGregor, what's up, man? How you doing today? Capture objective bottom. PF has done a lot better job pushing up to this Bravo flag the second time around. Um, Snot really is getting pinched from multiple angles. As you can see, Megalomaniac is getting them out of spawn. Um, Snot does have two people up in this building. We'll see if that Overwatch helps them out, but pretty much the whole team of PF is on burn currently. So Maniac gets taken down on that right side. Um, Snot will be able to push out onto the objective, but having that tank for PF is very advantageous. I'm glad to hear, Justin. I'm glad you're doing good. So, PF is dominating this Bravo flag this time around. Um, Snot is having a very tough time getting through from the spawn point. Um, they're going to lose this Bravo objective, and we'll be going into this little alleyway with the uh, two stories here for the next objective and if there's anybody that you guys want to see shoot out the names let me know um, I'd like to know in chat 
if there's any PF or snot players watching that are currently not playing. Give a shout out to both of these teams. Um, snot is trying to set up, but they're going to be meet by a squad of PF right on the flag. We're going to jump down on Devander and see what he is doing. He's using the SMLE infantry version of the scout weapon. It's a good choice. And if you notice, I'm going to scroll up here to the tabletop a little bit. Um, Pulp Fiction is pushing their tank on the other side of the cap radius to slow down Snot from getting into the burn. Nico9023 is the only one on burn currently for Snot. Um, WD Games is trying to push in with Fluffy. We'll see if they get in here. I don't think they're going to be able to uh, get on the burn and stop it in time. Um, it does look like Steven for Snot did take out PF's tank, which is going to help them a lot, but I, they are going to go ahead and capture Alpha. So we will be moving to the two Telegraph points that PF has to arm and destroy to get this victory. Um, there's 38 tickets left. So for those that haven't played Frontlines, it's kind of like a tug-of-war conquest. And when you get to the last objective and you capture it, it turns into kind of like a rush game mode where you have two objectives that you have to get to arm and destroy to get the victory. I think it's an awesome, awesome game mode. Looks like JW for Snot is bringing in that light tank again. Um, PF is all over Alpha at the moment. Looks like they will be getting this Alpha objective armed momentarily. The enemy has armed objective apples. And we'll see if they got enough people to take care of this tank and keep this objective armed. While all the attention is being directed over to Alpha Objective, PF did slide in and arm button. Bravo as well. Let's jump down on Megalomaniac. He is up top on the structure here overwatching Alpha. He's using the uh, Step Slaughter Medic Rifle. So they do get Alpha destroyed. We have lost Objective Apples. And it is nothing but PF over here on the Bravo objective. It's not, it's not going to be able to get in there. And there we have it. Pulp Fiction takes map number one. And it is nothing but PF over here on the Bravo objective. It's not, it's not going to be able to get in there. And there we have it. Pulp Fiction takes map number one um wandy psn itself is it down um i know that a lot of people a lot of players in south africa were having an issue signing in they got signed into psn but the chat um that's why i am running solo today uh, PSN there's no psn itself? chat and i didn't have enough time is to set down? up discord and everything correctly uh, to people, a lot of players in south africa have audio coming in um, for our second shoutcaster in seeker that was going to join us today but I can't see friends online I can't uh, join I, I created a chat but I couldn't see anybody to add so I think they're still having some issues but at least we were able to get this round going um, about 30 minutes to game time. We were talking about possibly having to postpone it. I'm glad that we did not have to. I think they're still having some issues, but at least we definitely getting some microphone echo in stream. About 30 minutes to game time. It might just be a little loud. Let me turn my sensitivity down a little bit and let me know. Actually, I think I just figured out the issue. You should not hear any more 
echoing. Let me know, guys. There should be no more echo. And the second round will be on Ballroom Blitz. Again, let me know about the echo, guys. It should be completely gone now. Sounds like your twin. You hear no more echoing? All right, good. All right, cool. Let's see what side everybody is starting to move over to. Good deal. I'm glad that it's gone. I'm running on little sleep today. Had a 24-hour shift yesterday, and I haven't been to bed yet. And we kind of found out about this match a little late. And apologies to Snot and PF for that error, but it has been cleaned and taken care of. So we shouldn't have any more issues. All right. And I'm hoping that they get PSN situated very shortly. Um, who in chat is excited for the update to release for the weapon patches as well as the two new maps that are coming? Um, I went to bed hoping that it was here today. Um, luckily it's not. So I'm hoping this week that it shows up. But I kind of have a feeling that it'll happen probably next Tuesday, the 30th. They did say in January, so I'm hoping that it does go for January. And we are going for 36-minute spawn. So, Snot will be the American side, and PF will be the German Empire. Hunlo, yes, uh, PF took the first map, and we are getting ready to start the second map. <laughs> You're excited for the maps? Why are you not excited for the time to kill patch? Um, Hanlo, right now, it is just this match being played. I don't like... I gotta find... There we go. I don't know why some of these cameras provide awkward filters. So it looks like Snot is rushing to get up top. Um, PF is in the courtyard, and they will be taking the burn. But this Overwatch from the square, as I like to call it... Um, is very advantageous. Um, PF is also is up top. Chris, I, I understand that, but um, it is a little late for the patch to come out, but if you can remember, Battlefield 3 and 4 also had late patches, and I think Battlefield 4 at the end was in a very great spot. Um, Brian, you should look up um, the time to kill patches. Uh, 
there's no official um I, I just personally haven't seen the official patch notes but some weapons are taking less time to kill um, they are increasing the accuracy of medic rifles so it looks like snot is ooh, they're about tied up here on the burn looks like snot has one more player than PF yeah, the balcony, the square is very advantageous, and it doesn't matter what game mode it's in. Let's jump down here on J Rad for PF. Looks like he is running the Federoff Trench. Definitely one of those weapons that was introduced. That definitely changed the uh, play style for the medics. Um, I like that they did add it. Medic rifles did need a closer ranged weapon that could deal or at least compete with a lot of the SMGs. Um, everybody, for the most part, use the Hell Regal or the Automatico. So PF is getting this burn back in their favor. Looks like this is going to be a lot closer round. Let's kind of go to the tail of you so we can see the spread. Let's jump down here on Beast. Balcony is ballroom, basically. It, it really is. Um, you know, for the casual player, it it will change a little bit, but I think that I think they'll get used to it very quickly. I'm I'm not too worried that they will uh, that they'll have a hard time adjusting. Um, you know, a lot of the Battlefield games, like like you said, the word casual. Battlefield 1 is a little more casual than like Battlefield 3 and 4 were. Um, they were a little more skill-based. I think they're just trying to provide a little more skill into Battlefield 1. And that's the problem with jumping off of the balcony. There's only certain spots that you can jump off and not take full damage. So Snot has done a great job this time around. They will take the Charlie objective first. And we will be moving into the ballroom. Which <laughs> the ballroom always makes for an intense battle because it's such close quarters. And I'm going to stay kind of top-down view just to uh, watch both teams transition to pushing towards the ballroom. Yeah, the dead drop. I, I have been a victim of it as well several times. And then sometimes you'll jump off of it and take absolutely no damage. And then sometimes it's just boom. Capture objective duff. Yeah, it's just going to speed up the game a little bit more. Um, and those that are highly accurate with medic rifles, I think, are going to benefit from this time to kill. But really what they're trying to achieve is bringing the weapons into their desired efficiency ranges. That, you know, submachine guns are definitely going to bring the fight up close uh, more in line with themselves. See, there's nobody on flag here. We got one PF. Um, but th that's the thing is, you know, some medic rifles, excluding the Federal, because it's completely different than the other medic rifles, um, they would usually get beat with equal skilled players, say, assault versus medic up close. And 
I do agree with that. But some people are very good with like the Hell Regal, and at medium ranges can do very well with it. Where medic rifles tend to um, succeed, and they're just trying to bring everything in line with each other. And I think that that's a good thing. Let's jump back outside. There's not much going on here. It's all PF inside. So it looks like Snot is doing a great job of holding the top. And yeah, Krona, a lot of people are going to complain about getting killed quicker. Um, but sadly, it does not matter how good or how bad a game is or if a great game has a couple bugs or issues, there's always going to be somebody complaining. Nothing's ever going to be perfect, and we just have to deal with what we have. I think I, I think the auto-loading in a skilled hand will be just fine. I don't think you're going to have as much issues, issues as you think. But we will know shortly. I haven't played in um, the CTE with the, the updated changes. Um, I just haven't had time to really sit down and play it. So, But I am looking forward to it. I've watched a bunch of uh, streamers discuss their opinions about it. Um, some are very lopsided, as I, was, I would put it. Um, some are very open to the idea, so... Just as long as you don't get bayonet killed quicker. Yeah, like... I think the bayonet should have, like, a minimum of maybe five to ten steps before you can activate it. And I know that there's some time limit on it, but... There's sometimes I swear the dude is just standing still and just turns around and I'm in a bayonet. They better make bayonet sharper. Aww. So, Snot does have the burn here on the Charlie flag. Now it's going, it is swaying quickly back in PF's favor. We got some mortars coming in from Devander for PF. Um, luckily, Snot is kind of under this this uh, cover on top of the square. You know, I I agree that there should be some kind of counter. Um, my, my real issue with the bayonet is how fast you can activate it and the, uh, the lunge that it seems to have at the end of the charge. So, on... The attacker's like point of view, it doesn't look like you lunge forward, but on the person getting bayoneted, it's like they teleport that last like three feet. It looks like PF has been locked down off of the top, which is not good. Rowan just tried to climb the ladder. He got taken out by the Parabellum very, very quickly. And I don't know how many scout players are in chat today, um, but I just had this crazy idea, like, I don't know why I want a skin or a camo for the flare gun, but I think it would be awesome. Because if you look at the normal flare gun and then, like, the infiltrator flare gun, uh, the scouts is, like, a little bronze color and the infiltrator is silver, like, I, I think it would be cool to have, like, a skin for that. Just, want, just step aside and yeah uh, there's a lot of times that I've just like stepped sideways and just watch them run in circles and then they hit like a wall and stop and there's nothing they can do about it it's funny so we got a pretty good fight here for this Charlie objective um, PF had it about halfway burned and snot has brought it back into their favor very quickly But I definitely do think in a month's time, we're going to be a lot happier with the time to kills. Beats just had a very nice drop down from the top. He only took 
17 damage. But he is going to get taken out by Lamet from PF. Yeah, like... I just think it would... I just think it would be cool if they added something, just something simple like that. Like, it's it's definitely not a necessity by any means. But, like, I just think it would be cool to have, like, a different skin. Say, you get a thousand vehicle repairs. That you get a, a different skin for the repair tool. Um, or a thousand spots and you get a different skin for your flare gun. Like, it would just be something cool um, for people that like to go after um, challenges. Yeah, I, I don't know why you would drop down either. I wouldn't have. I would have just stayed up top. You're so much more advantageous. Oh, yeah. That's a Quick got a good kill here with his hurry looking down. And that shows you the power of being on top. You get complete coverage of the inside square. You can see down. It's just so good. Um, Brian, I have not seen anything so far to suggest customizing our soldiers. Um, I think that they did a great job uh, designing each faction's look, and I don't think that they're going to change that. Um, the authenticity of most of the soldier uniforms are very accurate. So I don't see them changing it. They need to do a fan base skin contest. Um, you could you could go on Reddit or uh, Twitter and post something like that. I mean, it is a possibility. I know with Battlefield 4, we did have the community designed maps where a lot of community members had feedback into the design of the maps. And I think that those were a very big hit. Um, I really like that. Duff. Incursions will have customized uniforms, which would make sense since that's like their com their competitive mode. Um, L yeah, the the top of the square is allowed. Um, there's really no restrictions on weapons. Um, so, and that's kind of just what the team agreed to, and that's what the community for Tier 1 Gaming has agreed to. Yeah, it, it definitely would not... Customization in Hardcore Mode definitely would not work um, at all. So it does look like Snot is going to capture this Delta Point. We'll be moving on to the Echo Flag momentarily. I love the fight that ensues here inside the ballroom. It's such close quarters. It's so fun to watch. And PF has been wiped off of the flag. AA is turned off. And I would not consider it a pub match. Um, all the rules were voted on by the community for the community. So I know that there's other leagues that ban certain weapons or Band locations on the map. Um, we wanted to play play out as they were designed, and that's what everybody had agreed to. So PF is heavily on burn. Snot is trying to push in. They have one player, Brad, on flag currently. It looks like they're trying to take the hill behind Echo Flag. Um, it's a good Overwatch position as well. I understand that 
uh, Corona, but at the same time, most other battlefields had what? Two, maybe three factions? So Snot is pushing. They've done a great job of pushing PF off the bird. It is in their favor. Let's jump down on them. Let's see if we can get on Angel here. If it'll let me. There we go. You want patching up? Here, first. Ooh, he gets taken out. Dean takes him out. He uses you in the SMLE carbine. They need to push up and get on burn because it is still Snot's favor here. PF did do that and they are now burning in their favor. We have five Snot players on burn. This is an all out fight here for this objective. Let's see here. I'm going to back up a little bit, see if there's anybody on this hill. Um, Ghost inside for Snot is on the wall. Devander doesn't see him yet because he's hidden by smoke. He's going to run right past him. So Ghost is being a ghost. Snot has done a great job pushing back to this flag very quickly. They are slowly, looks like they're outnumbered by it couple players here um, they're pushing back to the hillside again Brad and Anonymous is pushing back Brad gets taken out so PF did recover and take echo flag so we'll be moving back into the ballroom Let's see if PF can get there quickly. gets one and that just shows you the power of the overwatch and it, it works for the central charlie flag as well as the echo flag and the uh the bravo objective so it's not as pushed in heavily it looks like they're gonna maintain that overwatch as well as the ballroom uh, pf is trying to push through the the corridor to the corridor and the back gated area is their approach to the Delta flag. Let's jump down and see the action inside. Um, a lot of people like to play this upper hallway. I personally don't like it just for the fact that there's so many walls around you that you can take such splash damage. It looks like Snot will be taking control of this Delta flag. And we are... I personally don't want to see any of this uh, trash talk. Let's just keep the chat clean. We're here to watch these two teams play. It's not about ESB and it's not about Tier 1. It's about Snot and... P.F. It's not the it's not the the platform, the time, or the place to uh, be discussing our differences with other communities, and we're just going to leave it at that.
I, I, I don't mind comments like, do you feel that it is casual? That's Stuff like that's fine. Like, you know, everybody has their opinions, and that's why you're either with ESB, some other group, or you're with Tier 1. That's the difference. We don't come in and trash talk. Let's just leave it at that. So PF is got the majority on the flag here at Echo. Um, Snot is still trying to work that back hill and overwatch coming from the square here on the top side. Um, PF is very heavily on this one side. As you can see, one incendiary grenade lit four of them on fire. Um, PF did a great job recovering. It looks like they will be taking Echo back and we're moving once again back to the Delta objective inside of the ballroom. Um, PF needs to get there early and set up their their positions and they can't just keep wasting a lot of time out here on this fight. Um, they already know Snot's going to have the upper hand with the elevation, but if they push quickly now, um, who do we got down there? Laminate. They, they can get they could get there really quick. So it's going to be a 2v2 currently on flag. And Fluffy is going to win that 2v2 all by himself. He picks up Brad, um, but PF is pushing that those uh, two back stairways there. Capture objective Duff. Um, Snot is set back. It's going to be hard to get Snot out of here. PF is really going to have to strategically push in but they they need to push in let's see where they are separated at so as you can see ghost where ghost is at he can see down onto this elevated area um, that pf is trying to come through you have fluffy and brad down at the gate um, they are literally just cordoning off this area covering all of their flanks it looks like Ashy Boy gets in for PF. He takes out one. You see how long he survives inside here. Um, him and Nico are very close to one another. Let's jump down in here and check out this action inside. Looks like Snot did a great job of clearing PF off of the objective, so now it's going to sway heavily in Snot's favor. Uh, PF is still trying to push through that upper corridor. Um, it's a very, very tough push from either side back to this Delta flag. Um, Snot continuously is doing a great job of getting back, getting set up, covering their flanks. And both of these teams are from the South Africa region. Let's see if Snot is going to commit some of these players off of the top of the square to this Echo objective this time around. I know they're, they're going to leave at least one or two up there at all times. Um, it'd be silly not to leave at least a couple players up there. That Overwatch, again, is very advantageous for, for whatever team holds it. Um, you get your lines of sight for either shooting or communication. So it looks like PF is going to get back to the flag first and start setting up. Capture Objective Edward. We have ten and a half minutes left of this round if it does not get completed by blowing up the telegraphs. So it'll be interesting to see if Snot can pour the pressure on here late and just finish this one out.
PF is flanking that top side, which is a very smart move. Um, Snot has kind of changed up their approach a little bit, sending more players from the gated area. But I don't think it's going to help them very much. We got some more mortars coming in. PF has done a great job of not allowing Snot to advance past this Echo objective. They really need to get in really quickly. As you can see, PF is pushing very fast to try and get back to the ballroom. Um, they are going to be met by several Snot players that are already set up. And that's something that Snot has been doing very well this round. Watch this push in here. Capture objective duff. So PF has done a great job this time around getting into this ballroom and getting set up early. I'm going to get back up here in my little corner camera so you can watch the action take unfold here inside of the Delta flag. Um, David, uh, anybody in chat from EN or Triple V? that can answer David Hernandez's question. That would be very appreciated. Snot's done a great job turning the tides here on this Delta objective. Um, PF was, was holding it very well, but again, I think just being that many players up here on this top corridor with how much splash damage you can take from grenades and everything, there's no one, there's really nowhere to run. It's hard to maintain that position. PF is pushing a lot harder this time to really get on this flag, but. Snot is doing a great job defending it. Um, we'll see if this push here helps PF get in here. Uh, we still have Ghost up top for Snot. Um, Snot's pushing in the side as well as the hallway. So we're going to get down here and watch that push come in. And I definitely think this is a better... Um, spread out strategy here for PF on the flag. Um, they got Snot kind of blocked off in that quarter, which is great, but they really have to make something happen here. So we're just under six minutes left of this round, and it has been a battle. Looks like we are going to be neutralized. Back to the start, Charlie flag. Um, PF has done a great job pushing back in here. Let's jump outside and see if PF can get up top and start. It looks like Spooky is up top for PF already. Um, but if you can see on the far side, Snot is heavy. Um, that'll Nick. He's gonna. He's going to get taken out by Steven. Capture 
Detective Charlie. So Snot's going to get the initial burn in their favor here on the Charlie flag. Um, PF is going to have a hard time, especially with how many Snot players are up top. So down here on Twinkle. Oh, I guess I'm going to go down to Duff on the bottom. He's going to try and climb this ladder. It's not going to work out in his favor. Um, it looks like Twinkle Tolls had set up some tripwire bombs. Um, it did take himself out because he was too close to them when they were tripped. David, how many uh, how many kills did you get with that artillery strike? <laughs> I can hear some of the characters talking. Yes, uh, um, and I agree that three full front lines match that end in draws is a long time to just keep fighting back and forth. It was a six piece? Nice. I was excited, uh, Sunday night, I was on Achi Baba and I was lucky enough to get the infiltrator kit and I I got a five man feed with just a flare and I was tickled to death because I like I can use it and I know how to uh, place it it just it's usually one or two kills but getting that many kills it is just awesome did a great job we have a minute a minute and 45 seconds left of this second map um, we are moving back to the central location so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough tough round to call here for whatever team wins let's look at some of the scores here 67 kills for Brad for Snot and 52 kills for Dean Freeman for uh, PF. So remember, Snot is the U.S. side, and PF is the uh, the German Empire. And Snot has done a great job of positioning almost all four corners here so they can get all four angles um, to the adjacent corner from them um, covered. Very smart move by them. Snot has just maintained this upper, the, the upper part of the square the entire round. Um, and it's, it's paying off for them. PF really needs to get a couple players up there and really clear it off. It's going to be very tough for them to do it, but I think as long as Snot pulls the top, um, they're not going to be anything to do about it. So we have three seconds left. Remember, Snot is the U.S. side. 
and they will win that round. So we will be going to a tiebreaker. That was a great round. And we will be going to Aragon Forest for the tiebreaker round. Yeah, this could very well end in a tie. Um, in that case, we will just replay that map that they're on. Um, we'll drop the time limit down a little bit. And just we have to let them go until we have a clear victor. But I don't think it's going to end in a tie. And yeah, because PF did not have that upper hand, they did a great job recovering and maintaining what they did have. Yeah, one flag difference. And that's that's the fun part of these front lines. Like There's some that end in the first 10 minutes, and some that go the whole... I think they, they started at 36 minutes, so they go the whole 36 minutes and end up tying or the difference is in this case one flag difference it's just crazy so brad hit 70 kills for snot and it looks like dean is 52 the top killer for pf And yeah, for the for teams that are in the chat, make sure that you guys are getting with another team, um, getting things sorted out and scheduled. Um, try and get it on the calendar as soon as possible for uh, the broadcasters to start filling those requests. Um, not all of them will be filled. Um, there's just way too many teams to be able to cover all of them. But I know that the uh, shotcasters are trying to fill their schedule up as fast as possible. That way we can get as much coverage of the 100 days offensive front lines tournaments covered. So as the teams get sorted out here, Aragon Forest is, and Ballroom are pretty tough. Um, it does look like Pulp will be the U.S. side and Snot will be the German Empire side. Looks like we have two players left to rotate. Now one. Both of these teams are doing a great job switching themselves. Yeah, dude. Like, this map, just sitting in the tabletop view with nothing going on, it sounds like the sounds that DICE has created is amazing. It shows a lot of attention to detail because the chaos will be ensuing very shortly. All right, we got a minute and a half here before the team start. Um, we have one more PF loading back in. And visually, this map is probably my favorite. Um, I It's just crazy to think you know, 10 years ago, the graphic quality and how far it has come. Um, it is just, I can't wait to see games in the next five to 10 years. Like it's just going to look crazy. 
like you're actually in the environment. Um, Dice has always done a great job, I, in my opinion, with designing the maps. Um, they flow very well for the most part. Um, the weapon sounds is extensive. The look and design of the weapons, um, the uniforms in this game are just amazing. Oh, Carolyn, yeah, th this map is... This one and Fort DeVoe, I think, are the harder ones to spectate because of... With Fort DeVoe being inside for the most part, this one you have a, the, the tree canopy... So, all right. Yeah, <laughs> and then with the gas and flares, yeah, you're right. Like, eight seconds in, you got flares coming from both sides of the map. Um, PF is going to make it to the flag first. You got mortars coming in. You got AT rockets, smoke, gas, flares. Um, it's this map is awesome. Um, Robert, yeah, I'll I'll give it a few minutes to where they start getting some kills going. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, I I don't need to mention the gas. <laughs> So who do we have down here? We have... I can't really see his full name here. Mad and Quek are pushing from the backside. I'm trying to keep... It is Instant's favorite right at this moment. Yeah, I always thought that too, Wandy, that collapsing the bridge would... It would make that bottom side way more hectic than it already is. Ben Ryan, what's up? How you doing today? Thank you for tuning in. Let's see if PF, PF can push back onto this. Uh, Snot is set up on both sides of the bridge very well. As well as they do have some players on the bottom side. Uh, looks like Snot might take the first objective. And they do not. PF has done a great job pushing underneath. Several of these players are really close. Help me out. I'm hit. Someone help me. Hell, Razor, yeah, dude, that machine pistol is... It is so fun to use. The reload sucks, but man, is it super fun to use. Um, no, I did not know that it was rear eye, but welcome. Those wounds, I can fix them. That only gets a couple, a couple revives here. That's going to help them out drastically. There are three quarters filled here. Um, he's going to pull out the needle, I think, a little too early to get that revive. He should have tried to clear the area before going after those revives. Have you guys seen the African Hulk? Go zoom in on all the gas and you'll see. <laughs> Do Corona, man. I thought that the Federa, or excuse me, uh, the Fromer stop full auto was the G18. The machine pistol is in like its own category. It's it's just crazy because like if you wanted. The uh, Fromer Stuffle Auto, it had to be one of the vehicle um, weapons. So you can't, not everybody can just use it. But now that they introduced that machine pistol, I mean, 
and it does fairly well at short to medium range as well if you burst fire it well. I mean, it, it, it's just crazy that DICE took the Automatico that I, I believe they have set at 900 rounds per minute and introduced a, another weapon that it's at either 11 or 1200 rounds per minute. So, I mean, it actually fires quicker. The only thing that they did to try to really balance it was the recoil as well as the slower magazine size and the reload. So, I think they did a fairly good job with trying to balance it. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how it reacts when the uh, TTK patch goes live. So, PF is going to take the Charlie flag first. We finally have a flag captured. So, we'll be moving over to the Delta, which is off to the right side of the screen. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that this map on Conquest and other game modes, that for the most part, is the Flame Trooper. Like, I mean, the Villa Perosa is very, it's very good. Um, Snot does have the high ground. Currently, I'm um, looking down onto this Delta objective. It is going to be hard for PF to hold it with that elevation. Capture objective Duff. But if they can keep Snot pushed back from the objective, I think they have a strong chance of capture capping it um you just got to get that you know your front line set up to stop the advancement and you can do you you can kind of counter react the elevation of the hillside in the background i don't know if they like flanking or not um i know that there's several times when you're mid-match that you don't normally think of it or it just slips your mind that's something you would normally do um, it's just something that as a player you have to be thinking of those um, it's just gonna make you a better player better call outs um, and what PF just did is they brought that flank around and took the high side to shoot down onto snot and they're gonna be pushing right onto the objective and the bleeds gonna start going in their favor So it looks like we're going to have another great round. But instead of pushing all of your players down onto this Delta flag, PF should have tried to really shut off that top corridor as well as the right flank on the screen. Um, so that'd be Snot's left flank and middle. They should really have kind of pushed some players up to stop those advancements. For the most part, they are doing really good. They're going to have to push very quickly. Um, PF really just needs to commit their players for another 10 seconds. And they're not going to be able to get it. Snot's going to be able to push back and take, start taking control of this Delta Black. Um, Snot does run very well together as a team. Um... Yes, mortars, if placed very well, could take out a couple. But I think that mortars, for the most part, are a little weak. And definitely have to agree with Razor is this map. And really, for this objective on Conquest, I would say like the Delta objective um, could work very well. But there's just too much tree canopy. Uh, too much obstruction, the grenades tend to blow up before it actually gets to the intended target area. Quentin, what is... Are you asking me what my nationality is? So it looks like if PF pushes right now, they can stop this burn, but I think it is going to push back to 
the bridge, and it does. Um, that push, that blink was just either a little long, um, they pushed around too far, and they also didn't push quick enough. So we are going to be resetting back at the Charlie objective at the bridge. Yeah, and and it doesn't matter which mortar you use. You know, a lot of people do use the airboard air burst mortar um, because they are the most effective against infantry. But at the same time, it's it unless they are already damaged, and I want to say at least 20 HP down, um, the single mortar isn't enough to kill them. Um, that's why like some of the weapons require you to get mortar kills. And I just said, forget it. It's not worth my time. Um, I just don't want to struggle and do it forever. I don't, Crone, I don't think there's any birds left in the uh, woods. I mean, if I was an animal and I heard all this commotion, I'd get, I'd, I'd be out of there. My Lise, what's up? How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Were you eating tacos today? Be honest. Yeah. I want to say I've spent less than 20 minutes of my entire time on Battlefield 1 in mortars. Um, I used them a little bit in Battlefield 4. Um, never really cared for them. It's just like shotguns. I've I rarely use them unless it's like a challenge and I need to use them. Uh, but I actually had sandwiches. You let me down. Every time I'm streaming, you always have tacos. I think you're slacking today. I'm going to jump to the other side of the bridge here so we can get a different perspective. Let's see. It looks like PF is trying to push from the right side of the screen to the underneath side. Um, they have one on the left side. Rowan, um, he gets one kill, so he does kind of wipe off that left side. PF does have a strong push here. That was not the correct time to reload. Yeah, it, that's the only time I would use mortars too, but then I don't even want to use them. I still don't want to do it. I just don't care about the weapons or specialization. Caroline, I'm, I'm hungry as well. After this match, I'll have to find me something to eat. Which team is running more medics? Um, we have two alive right now, three alive for PF. Um, it looks pretty, pretty even as far as medics go. Uh, there's probably four or five each at, at any given time that are alive. Yeah, you, you, and one thing that a lot of people don't understand with the mortars, if you fire in rapid succession, your accuracy is completely gone. Um, you really have to take your time, and if you place them correctly, you can do a lot of damage. We have taken objective Charlie. Yeah, dude, the limit charges are super fun. Now, the only thing I wish that they would change about the crossbow since you brought it up, um, with the infiltrator kit, the grenade blows up on impact. And I think the crossbow would see a lot more action 
if they reduced the time for the explosion once the grenade hits an object. Return to the combat area. Um, in all honesty, it's not... The medics aren't going to necessarily win the round for you. The, the deciding for this map is how well you can take advantage of the terrain. Um, like, like Snot's got some, if you can see up in the back right, they got some on flags, they got some up on the top elevation. Um, for PF to take this flag, they need to swarm a minimum of half the guys on the flag and then push past the flag to slow Snot from being able to recover. Um, it's all about your flanking and your positioning. Uh, medics are highly valuable, but you could run with two medics and do just as well as having three or four medics. Because um, your medics are only good if they're alive. Yeah, I mean, just with the crossbow, like... You see the indicator coming before it even gets to you. And then you have so much time before it actually explodes um, to move out of the blast radius. It's just way too long. Yeah, it's, it's definitely... I would definitely say holding choke points and preventing your players, to, players from getting to the objective is is the strong suit that's what you want to achieve and it's not just this map it's every map it's all your positioning it's making sure that you shut down the other team's play before they're able to fully make that play um, you're predicting their pushes so since this is pf's third time on delta flag they know the snot's going to push that middle corridor and they're going to push this right flank they need to shut those two lanes off And, like, I know that PF just captured this flag. It's not just missed getting enough players on the flag. Sometimes you literally just have to throw bodies onto that flag, especially if you're, you know, two, three seconds from capping it. Like, you just got to throw your, your body onto it. You just got to go for it. So, as far as medics go, this is where they're strong. Instead of making this next push with five guys they're making it with 10 so that's where medics thrive yeah the chaos in this map is awesome i i love it um i love that there's so many different pathways to take to each objective um, but yet you still feel like it's a close quarter and personal match Let's get high guys, Ender. I believe Ender is lurking around in here. I know he had several things to do today. He had to do some adulting, as I like to call it. Uh, PF is pushing a lot of their players through that center uh, corridor, as well as pushing train, uh, train tracks. Um, they're going to push heavy onto the objective. Yeah, both teams are doing very, very well. Um, Right now, it is in PS favor. I would say ever so slightly, um, but Snot has been doing a great job pushing, pushing back. Um, it does look like Snot is easily going to be able to capture this objective, and we'll be moving back to the D, the D flag. So, it doesn't take a ton of time to capture flags if you can just hold your tenant like your team off like they did a great job of on this far side snot did a great job of holding most of ps players just off of burn so one thing that pf really needs to do now is they need to shut these two lanes off so you can see heavy right here on the right side and right where just goose XXL came through. So, B Jonker 91 
is in a very good position. Um, he just gave up his back there to Goose. Like, those are the two lanes that you really, really, really need to shut off. Because the longer... The longer amount of time it takes your enemy to push through your line of defense is going to pay off for your time on the flag. Yeah, I, I'm actually going to play right after I eat. I'm, I'm excited. I love this game. Um, I was not completely sure on the, the, the gunplay early on, but this game is... I love it, and I can't wait to see what this uh, Time to Kill update has in store. Am I going to do commentary on Dawn vs. OGF? Uh, it just it depends on if I have a slot available for the time that those teams have requested to play their match. Um, there are... There are a few uh, commentators that are going to be doing the matches since there's so many. So it'll all just depend on scheduling. Um, when they want to play, um, Ender will have the request form hopefully done here in a little while today so people can start putting their requests in. Uh, my calendar is starting to fill up quite rapidly. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see, Razor. So Snot did a great job. Um, pushing back to the Delta flag very quickly, and we're going to reset back at the Charlie flag. Now, just I don't think Battlefield is life, but I definitely think it is. It's, it, there's no doubt it's the game of choice for me, though. Let's see here. I know this Friday I do have a a match. Um, it's 9 p.m. Eastern, so that wouldn't affect UK time. Uh, I did get some messages about a possible scheduling for a UK-based map, or excuse me, a UK time uh, match earlier on in the day, which I am available for currently. So you just got to get your requests into um, the broadcasters. You can. Um, Throw it in the 100 days offensive um, link, any of the broadcasters, and we'll try and get everything scaled as fast as we can. Um, what do I think of Snot? I think Snot is doing a great job. Uh, right now, as you can tell, a not a mouse is the only one watching the flank. He's not going to last long back there. PF is pushing from that backside. They're also providing a lot of pressure underneath. So Snot does need to spread out a little bit more to uh, protect their flanks. See, I, I Battlefield is an addiction. I, I, I can agree to that. Um, a lot of times, since I work really, really long shifts at work, um, I, s I spend a lot of it in my downtime watching gameplay, um, watching other commentaries. Like, I love it. So, Snot has taken the Charlie flag for the first time, so we'll be moving down to Bravo flag, which is at the barn. Um, there's relatively... I'm going to say two and a half ways in from this uh, from the last point. You have this left corridor, the middle corridor, and I say half because the left, the far right side of the screen really can connect to the middle as well. Um, this is a very tough objective as well because you do have the elevations in the background, and you do have, I'm going to back up a little bit, you can use the hill on the far left side of the screen, but what's happening is Snot is pushing in, and pushing PF back. So it's hard for PF to actually get in and stay on the objective. Um, JP, yes. There is no restriction on the weapons. Um, 
if it's in the game, we like to let people use it. I mean, it's there for a reason. Grandma's house is on Amiens. Now that's... It's, I mean, it is a it is a cabin. I mean, it is Hunter's cabin. And it's not just took it very quickly, but I don't know. I think it, I think I might like the name of Grandma's Grandma's house here. So we're gonna zoom over to the Alp objective. This is gonna be another close match. We have 11 minutes left. Looks like Twinkle Toes took out all of the artillery shells that are inside the bunker, which is a smart strategy. Um, it is fun to catch people off guard and blow them up and kill like four or five people. Uh, it's super fun on Conquest, but if you are really trying to defend it, you do not want those alive in there. Where's the Keebler's help? Because I want cookies. They're taking, they're taking a vacation, Joseph. Um, on Discord, go to the 100 Days Offensive page and start coordinating with what team you want to play with. And as soon as you find a team and you guys agree on a time, you need to shoot that request over to one of the broadcasters. So the broadcasters can uh, make sure that they can put you in the calendar because we, we really do want to stream as many matches as possible. With my schedule, a lot of Europe and South African times fit my schedule very well. Let's jump down here and see if we can get some action on the inside of the bunker because it gets crazy. Razor first, find do you have a team that you guys have coordinated with? Um, the, the, your map choices, the time that you guys want to play. Um, if you've done that, you can you could personally send me a message. Uh, Axe FPS on there. And if I can fit it, I'm gonna squeeze as many times or matches in, in my time allotted. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's fine, Razor. It's understandable. Another Just have your leader um, some first aid, take care of it. That'll be fine. I mean, you can talk on Discord all you want. Um, you Use it to communicate, get to know some of the other players. Um, and just to get to know the community better. And then you'll be able to see other teams that are out there and start, you know, discussing with your leaders He's which team ammo. you guys want to play. Um, everybody is required to play the other teams by a certain date. We have taken objective apples. So we always play at 8 p.m. You can tell. Yeah, yeah. That's. I think it's a six-hour time difference for me. I'm six hours behind, so as long as it's not a Monday or Wednesday, I'm usually available. Um, you're not allowed on chat or any of the channels. Um, we'll just have to get you added. Um, Wandy, can you add people? Might be able to post in like the general chats and stuff um but yeah if you're not a leader i don't think you're going to be able to see the channel for uh the 100 days offensive so 
so PF was able to hold off Snot from getting to Alpha. So it looks like both teams have made it to each other's last flags, but neither team was able to capitalize on those moves. Um, Jacob, what I would do is I would find um, whatever region you're from, um, look at the list of teams, and just start communicating to them. Start talking to them, um, start playing with them, and try and find a fit that's best for you as well as the team. Um, that's, that's just the best way to do it. Um, just start networking. There's a lot of there's a lot of great teams in this community. Wandy, thanks for that help there on for Discord. So Snot is gonna advance once again. So we are going capture objective <laughs> It's gonna be a very, very close round. Um so we have Megalomaniac and Goose. I will try and get on some of them to capture some of this. So it looks like Snot is committed, I would say 90%, 95% of their players to trying to enter the bunker. Um, you need to split your forces a little bit. That's a, it is a hard push to push into those doors, um, especially since PF is already set up on the inside. Yeah, dude, this alpha, I'm gonna, really all of the objectives on this map are pretty brutal, but I definitely think alpha, is definitely the hardest to take. Later, Justin. Have a good day. Thank you for stopping by. All right, let's see if PF can make another push and get back to neutral here. Never really liked the C93. The gas or the amount. Yeah, I mean, for the longest time, I just stuck with the 1911, except for for the Scout class, I always used the Fromer. But ever since they introduced the Obrez, like, there's so many times that it has come clutch. Um, it does suck when there's more than one person. But. I love it. I love that it hits hard. Um, it kind of reminds me of the Magnum or the Deagle or the Rex from Battlefield 3. And then when they brought the Deagle into Battlefield 4, like, I love those hard hitting skill cannons. I definitely don't think that the, the Magnum in this game is, it's not super accurate, but the hit fire is very, very good. And it is a two shot. I think up to like 10 or 12 meters. So, yeah, both teams are. It's just back and forth. These last, these last two objectives have just been brutal. Um, Snot has gets the upper hand, moves uphill. PT gets the upper hand and comes back downhill. I mean it. It is crazy. So we are just shy of two minutes left into this round. Um, Snot is pushed very quickly. They did a great job getting into the bunker on the right side of the screen. Um, if they can maintain that, this will be huge for Snot. Yeah, I mean... 
Uh, there's there is times that I've done the same, just ran around with the Obrez only. Um, but you know, in Battlefield Three, I loved the Rex. Um, I think it had a glitch a little bit because you could just spam fire it and it stayed accurate um, from hip fire. But the Magnum, like that one shot, one shot headshot, was just so nice at like three to five meters. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just gonna, that revolver's gonna be just like another Obrez. Um, so I'm gonna be interested in, to see. Um, if you guys have watched any of the CTE footage, is it just me or does it seem like some of the iron sights for any of the weapons that they've shown? Have, like, they're really, really thick. And I, I can't stand that super thick iron sight look. I wonder if that's just me. I just wanna hear from you guys. It is going to be hard for PF to bring this back. But we're going to see. So just remember, PF is the United States side and Snot is the German Empire side. So we will see in the next 20 seconds. Well fought round by both of these teams. Yeah, that, that, that damage drop off does... It drops off really, really quick. I think Snot is in a great position. They're just not going to have enough time to push through this. So the German Empire is going to win. So Snot is able to pull off the victory. Great job to both of these teams. Very, very well fought. Um, the iron sights are a bit uncomfortable to use. The only one I really like is the Lee Enfield sights. The new medic gun has absolutely hideous. Yeah, I, that that new medic weapon, like the the sights are off to the left side. Like, just mentally, that's gonna throw me off. I'm just not even gonna waste my time trying to deal with it. But. I mean, outside of, honestly, the Scout class and the LMG is what I'm looking forward to in the new weapons that come out. So, great job by Snot. Great job by Pulp Fiction. Um, great three rounds. The first round went to Pulp Fiction, and the last two went to Spare No Other Team. Um, Hard-fought victory for Snot. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed uh, pay attention to um, Tier 1 Gaming Live YouTube page and as well as Discord and Facebook. Um, if you haven't subscribed or followed, it's just a couple seconds to get all that information that we send out for upcoming events. Uh, get those notifications. Just go ahead and subscribe and follow for those. Um, we hope to see you guys come back in the future for some more of the 100 Days Offensive Frontlines Tournament. Um, my name is Axe, and I hope that you guys have a great day. Let's see if there's anything left in chat here. Mm. All right, nothing left to really say. Hope you guys have a great evening for those that are overseas in Europe and South Africa. Um, and those that are in North America, hopefully you guys have a great finishing to your afternoon. Um, I am Axe, and we'll see you guys later.